When I started flower farming, I didn't know I was going to become also a Yupik raspberry farm. And today I'm gonna to tell you how that happened and how I kind of just let that business take shape based on what people wanted and needed. Welcome to Learn Cut Flower Growing. Whether you are an inspiring green thumb, a busy mompreneur, or simply seeking a passion, you are in the right place. If I had to do it all over again, knowing what I know now, I would do it smarter. And that's what I'm sharing here. I want to take years off your learning and help you bloom with confidence in your garden. Each episode, I'll share practical tips and ideas, heartfelt stories, and expert insights to help you grow and find balance in your journey. I'm Paula Rice, your cut flower farmer guide. I've been growing for 16 years, and I'm an expert in my field, literally. So grab your gardening gloves and listen to me while you work, or grab a cup of coffee and relax as you learn to manage a cut flower garden and business. Okay, you guys, today I am coming to you from my raspberry patch. I started growing raspberry as a foliage for my flowers from the very, very beginning. It literally is a forever foliage. It will be the last thing that dies in a vase. So when I scaled up, I ended up planting 20 60 foot rows of raspberries. And then when I went to the grocery store, holy smokes, the grocery stores take a lot of product and I needed a lot of raspberries. So I added 12 more rows. So literally I have 32 rows of raspberries and they fruit on second year growth. So what we have in the field here in the spring, what we're looking at is what's leafing out is second year growth and it is going to fruit this year. And from the base of the plants, we have new shoots starting up. Now those sh new shoots will get tall enough for me to harvest greens from this year, probably in June, halfway through June. And then literally I am cutting on them nonstop. And every time you take a cut on a raspberry up high, it's going to branch below it. And because we basically torture our raspberries by cutting, 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 cutting for foliage, we have very, we have a ton of raspberries on the next year's growth. Like it is a phenomenal level. And so what happened was I started telling people, hey, just come and pick raspberries, pick this row because we were interested in the raspberries. We absolutely could not keep up on picking them because the raspberries literally have to be picked every other day. Every row has to be picked every other day. We could not keep up on that. So we were just inviting people to come out and pick the entire row. Give me 10 bucks, take every single berry, be a good berry picker, because if you're not a, berry, a very good berry picker, then the plants shut down and then you can't keep picking them. And you can pick raspberries for me here in North Idaho. It's the entire month of July and sometimes we'll go a week into August. So what's happened over time is that, well, we have raised our prices to $15 a row but we have 32 rows that need to be picked every other day. And we have a pretty faithful following of people who come. Like literally already people are calling and saying, when's raspberry season? I'd like to sign up for a row on a certain day. And I worked really hard last year to create a CRM in Dubsado so that people literally can sign up on my website. It takes the money and they just kind of know how to come here and pick raspberries. So it's possible to have these little side cash crops when you are flower farming. Like we have the peonies, we have some woodies, and we ended up having this. So kind of stay open to the idea of, well, if this becomes a thing. I mean, when you start a business, you don't necessarily know what people are going to love or what's going to go. So you want to kind of be open to that. And you can do the math on the raspberry rose. You know, if you wanted to charge you could do by the pound, but that was too much of a pain for me. And I just was telling people, yeah, you could do it by the pound, but oh my gosh, that would, we'd have to staff it. And to me, I was selling flowers, that was my point. But you could do the math if you had that many rows, you could charge a certain price and you know they're gonna be in production for a full 30 days, every other row. You can do the math and you know make up your own, your own business. But 
What I really want to share today is about how to manage your raspberries, whether you just have a few raspberries or you're doing a few rows because you just want that stellar foliage. So I have my raspberries in a row and I do not, absolutely do not plant them in a garden because they sucker and they are going to spread and go everywhere. So literally, if I was to get, if you were to get raspberries today, I would say, hey, plant them in the lawn. Plant a lawn somewhere and plant your raspberries. Either that or till up an area, plant your raspberries, and then just go ahead and plant some type of a low, slow growing perennial grass that isn't too aggressive because I just mow, okay? I, I do that, I put it in my lawn because I wanna just mow my raspberry rows. And so at the base of my raspberries, they literally do get grassy and I don't even care. I'm not gonna put wood chips on them all of the time. That's too much work. This works really good. I space the rows far enough that the lawnmower can get down and mow really tight to them and that keeps them well behaved. So in the spring, you could literally do this in the fall too. Either the fall or the spring, you need to remove the old canes, okay? Because they're dead. And so you just come in and you will pull them out. You will pull off the old canes. You just cut them down to the ground as low as you can. And then we come through and we tie them up with this special string that I get from Amazon and it's pull line. My husband uses it in the electrical trade to pull things and man, is it tough. And it literally will last probably a solid two years. It could go three. I cut it every year and restring things because it's just easier to clean out the raspberries if the string isn't in my way. But that is excellent. This one, this bucket is Powerfish Pull Line by Ideal. And it is so fantastic. It has this little blue, blue line through it and it is so tough. So once we clean out the old canes, then when we set up this row, we drove metal fence posts down the row. And I'd say probably every 12 feet, I have a metal fence post. And that is so that I can run the string from fence post to fence post on both sides of the raspberries and capture the raspberries. And if I don't, well, I put, yeah. Okay, come this way, Ivy. So when, if the, if the string isn't tight enough, then we will come through and we'll tie it together, like in between the two metal fence posts. I'll come and tie a knot and bring the, the, the strings together and kind of suction it up. And you have to tie up your raspberries, not if you were only using it for foliage, but you kind of, yes you would, because the berries will become so laden with fruit that they will start to fall over. So even if you're not selling your fruit or doing anything with your fruit, that can be kind of messy when you're out here harvesting your foliages. And so we tie them up so that they stay well supported and then people can just come through and pick the berries. But I absolutely love just having a field of raspberries and we mow in between the rows. I do not worry about the grass. I lay one line of drip down through the raspberries because raspberries have very shallow root. So literally I could come to a raspberry plant and, pull, and probably just pull it out. And so that's the easy management. If you were gonna mulch and do all that extra stuff, that works really great. We will do a fertilizer once in the spring, but they are just so abundant. And you guys, they are so expensive in the grocery store. Literally, you get this tiny cup for six bucks. It is ridiculous. And so when raspberry season comes, it's always kind of a pain when you start like something with a you pick because you always have those people like, they're just not gonna be happy. So over there, the rows are 60 feet long and over here, they're 150 feet long. This field is younger, so it's not as built up and bushy. But I tell people, and I have this on my website, like you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Okay, because literally we had a woman come, we got her a chair, she sat there and she smushed her berries into a two gallon Ziploc bag. And literally if you had laid those out 
on a cookie sheet. You would have had just a, a huge cookie sheet. And we're talking $15 here, people. You would have had just a heaping cookie sheet of berries. But she smushed them in there. And then she went on Facebook and complained that she didn't get enough. It isn't a good deal. Don't go. And literally, you guys, it's a cup in the grocery store for six. And I just, I was like... I'm, I, I don't know. <laughs> My team went out there that night. I'm like, let's even go see if she picked well, because you have to be a good picker. Like we will, if you're not a good picker or you're someone that doesn't come, then we have to come in and fix the row so that it can keep producing for people that come later in the month. So I need you to be a good picker. But we went out and we picked after her and man, I picked probably a half a gallon of berries from her row because, and I do this on the website, I do this on the video, like please get down, please take everything. If you have a raspberry that you see that is shriveling up, it would be so helpful if you did just kind of pick it up, pick it off and throw it on the ground. And it just is a community thing to do. It's just something, it's a good price and you kind of just train everybody to do that. Here's another thing, because I, as you know, I have a harder time. It's getting harder to get labor to come and help. And I've, I've been thinking, how can I get the raspberries cleaned out? Because I have it penciled out how many hours it takes to clean out these raspberries, how many man hours. And if I have pizza and I get, you know, grade school kids or friends over for a, a morning, like I'd love to get like 10 people over and we can knock it out literally in a morning which is so nice rather than us struggling along over the course of a month to get it done. But I've also thought about spring break. You could find out what kids just want to have a job for a day and have them come. Or I have another friend who suggested, you know, for the families that come and pick regularly, if they came and just cleaned out a row, then they could come and pick. If they showed up to help clean, they literally could have a row to pick in the summer, you could work up a lot of different systems to get a crew in to help you if you did a lot of berries. So I think about that a lot. Oh, oh, and I wanted to share that we were literally out here cleaning out our raspberries and I have an eye. You know how people can find antlers anywhere? They just kind of have an eye for it. Well, I have an eye here on my farm for praying mantis pods. And we, the team and I, the crew that I had, we found probably like 20 praying mantis pods in the raspberries. In fact, there's even some stuck to the metal fence post, which is so cool. And I took them to a class and gave them to some kids and talked to them about praying mantises. So yeah, I feel like that's the wrap up. I wanted to talk to how to manage the raspberries, how to manage the people. Oh, I know what I wanted to add. In the summer when people come with their families, because the guys get home from work, the wives come and their babies come, and the children can just kind of run and play. I'm pretty laid back. It's in a fenced area. And I just really love to see the families come. And I can see where the, the guys, the men, and oh, just everybody, they just wish they had something like this. So it's really awesome that people can come out to the country and, and have a good time and pick berries with their kids and their family. It's a lot to kind of manage. It's not a lot to manage the raspberries. Literally, we do it in the spring and it's done. It, you can forget it the rest of the time. So that makes it easy, but I guess when you have 30 some rows, it can be a little bit of a stress in the spring because here you are needing to get a lot done and it's something that has to be done. But I do love the people coming and I feel like we have to have food locally grown that's somewhat affordable. Anywho, that is my talk on that, you guys. And I just wanna encourage you to do something and something will happen. And you don't always know what that's going to be, but be open to a lot of different possibilities because when you say that prayer, Lord, what is possible? Oh my goodness, I think miracles can happen in that space. Okay, God bless, have a great week, and we will talk to you next week.